What's up guys, it's your pal Brendan from Modern To Me, and today we're gonna get started with operations with numbers. Instead of just like making these numbers and just having them essentially do nothing, we're gonna actually be modifying them and having them do something a little bit more useful than just printing them out. Not quite as useful as something interesting in a game, but still pretty useful. Stuff that you will actually, well, you'll be using everything I'm teaching you in your game, but stuff that you'll notice a lot more than what we've been t talking about. So, if you haven't noticed, I've cleared everything out. This program is going to be intense, so <laughs> not really, it won't be too bad. But I've just cleared everything out that we've typed so far, so we can have a fresh start. And we are going to get started. So, let's make an int. Let's call it int1. And we will set it, we will set it equal to 4. Let's go 4. Now, let's make another int. Int2. And set it equal to seven, set it equal to seven. And now we are actually gonna define a third in, I know this is getting ridiculous, in three, but we're not gonna set a value, we're not gonna assign a value because we're gonna be doing some operations, not like, surgi not like surgical operations, like mathematical operations, sorry. So let's set this in three equal to a value. Okay, so let's say we have these, we have this int1 and this int2, and we want it to be able to uh, have our program uh, set int3 to be equal to the sum of int1 and int2. It is probably exactly what you'd guess it would be. You just type int1 plus int2. So what this is going to do is this is going to uh, take int3, it's like, okay, we have int3, and then it's going to see the equal sign. And then it's going to realize, okay, we, are, we want to change this value of int3. So we want to do something with this value. And then after, after this equal sign, it's going to look for what we want to assign this to. So it's going to see int1, it's going to be like, all right, it's going to replace this int1 with a 4. It's going to know we want to, we want to take this value, 4 and do something with it. And then it's going to see this plus sign and it's going to be like, ah, Brendan, I see you, I see you. You want to you wanna add a number to this four. And then it's going to see int two and it's going to be like, oh, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. You want to have this be seven. So it's going to know that we want to set, set int three to four plus seven. But in case you're, you're confused or concerned that somehow int one and int two are going to change values, they are not. They're not going to change values because it's on the right side of the equal sign. The left side of the uh, equal sign, the left hand operators, that is what's getting changed. That is always the value that's going to be altered. Whatever is on the right side will not change. So right here, n3 is going to change, n1 and n2 are not going to change values. So let's try this out. System.out.print line, oops, print n3. There we go. And just in case you don't believe me, here, I'll just copy and paste this real quick. I am going to print out values of int1 and int2 also, just so you know that I'm not, I'm not messing with you, I'm not screwing with you. These values aren't going to change either. Okay, uh, let's, just, let's just run this real quick, just to make sure that everything's going well. And if we check it, right over here, 11, 4, and 7 just what we wanted perfect everything is under control okay so good job we are on our way with operations so the next thing we're going to want to do is we i mean addition is pretty useful but we should probably know all of the operations subtraction is uh, pretty much intuitive just what you'd think it's subtract so if we did this we should get negative three so let's just run this real quick we will see that we got negative three four and seven just what we wanted perfect bring it back here the ones that aren't as intuitive are multiplication and division so let's just do this at the same time so i can uh you know just save you some time save both of us time and i think you believe me now that int one and int two aren't going to change so i'll take those out too so we have i'll take this out also because we we want to set this value to the um, the product of int1 and int2. I was trying to think of that name. It's like fourth grade. I couldn't remember. So we want to make sure that they're multiplied. You can't just type in 
int1, x, int2, it's, that's not gonna come out right, so no, we can't do that. What you do is if you remember, an asterisk also represents multiplication. So in programming, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna send int, int3 to equal to int2 times with the asterisk int1. And if you print that out, we should get 28. So let's try this out. Actually, we're, yeah, we're not gonna do multiplication and division at the same time. Just, uh, you'll see why in a sec, but we scroll it down here and we see we got 28. Perfect, just what we wanted. Okay, the last one, division. Here we go. Maybe if you're really on top of things, you'll see where things are going with this division. But if we divide int2 by int1, how you do that is a forward slash. You do a forward slash for division because there's no like division symbol on the keyboard or anything tricky like that. So we have int3 being setting equal to int2 divided by int1, which is seven divided by four. Huh, that doesn't sound like anything can divide out like that. So what's going to happen? What, one? How are we getting one? If, you can, uh, if you're good at math, you know that seven divided by four is equal to 1.75. So if anything, you'd think that you'd get two because if, you, if you're rounding seven divided by four to an integer, you should get two. Well, what happens is in the computers, an int can't uh, have any sort of association with decimals. So you, you think it could get rounded up because it'll be okay, 0.75 gets rounded up, so you know it would be two. But actually what happens is even if it was 1.9999, the decimal gets truncated, which means it just gets cut off completely. So anytime you have a set an integer to a decimal value, you're gonna just get the uh, the decimal eliminated completely. So if you set uh, like int3 equal to 1.999, you're still gonna get one. So that's why one was printed out in the terminal. And uh, I'll discuss methods later in later tutorials on how to avoid this problem, what are some solutions. But for now, if you know that you're gonna be dividing, um, dividing some numbers like seven and four, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're uh, using floats or some sort of decimal number, like a double or any other method you might somehow know, but definitely float. So um, let's just do that real quick. Let's bring it back here. Let's change this to a float and I'll name it just uh, my float. And change this to my float and change this to my float. It looks like we might have something going here. Let's try this. Control F11. When we get something funny again, we still get one. Well, what's happening here is you're still dividing two integers. So you're still, you're, it's saying, okay, we have a float. We're gonna set it to a value of a float and it's taking seven and dividing it by four. But when you still divide two integers, you're still getting this 1.75 but it doesn't know it's a 1.75, it, trunc it truncates the decimal. So it's still, it's still coming out as one, but when you assign one as a float, you, it's changing it to 1.0 because it's a float value and not just an integer. So that's why you get 1.0. To solve for this, you need to make sure that these have floats, uh, have the float data. It knows itself, it, that this number is a float. You need to know, excuse me, you need to make sure that the computer knows that this is a float. So we need to change at least one of these to float because if at least one of these is a float, it's going to know that you are working with a float and that you probably want a float value back. So if we change this to a float as well, and oops, control S and run this, now we see that we have what we want, 1.75, perfect. Okay guys, I think that is it for this tutorial. Let's just go over this code real quick. We still have this int, but we changed this to float2 and uh, have uh, this be my float so that we could get this 1.75 value out. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Operations isn't too tricky. You just need to know that multiplication is asterisk and uh, subtraction is the sub subtraction addition is the addition sign and uh, division is the forward slash. That's really the tricky, tricky part. And also mixing these ints and floats that can get pretty tricky as well. But now you guys are experts and you're golden. So next tutorial is actually going to be something a little different. I believe that you need some uh, little coding exercises to make sure you're sharp. So 
that is what you're going to be dealing with next tutorial. I will see you there.